the 51st and last sitting of the Tobago House of Assembly for 2009 to 2013 session took place in the Assembly Chamber on Jerningham Street, Scarborough, where Assemblyman Rolly Quark, who moved the motion, standing in his name. Whereas Tobago is blessed with an abundance of community, central cultural heritage, and whereas systems in place by the Executive Council for research, collation, and storage of information have been woefully inadequate, and whereas this inadequacy has contributed to poor planning and inequitable distribution of the island's resources, be it resolved that this House appoint a committee to collect and archive the cultural retentions of each community, and be it for the resolved that this collected information be made available to all stakeholders. Madam Presiding Officer, I can name quite a number of persons throughout the communities from Crown Point to Charlotteville where if we can only speak with them and put this information in a particular manner and in a particular order will do well for us as we go down the road. Madam Presiding Officer, there are a number of ordinary people, village people, who would have done extraordinary village people things that only the village people would really speak highly about. And you know, these extraordinary things may never see the light of day on a national stage. But they mean so much to the village people, so much. And the, the, the motion is asking that we chat with these people, talk with these people, get the information from these people, and find a way to put it in a place, in an archive, where we will be able to see this information and especially with the birth of our university and when our students, both foreign and local, do their research, they will certainly find in one common place, one common place, the, the kind of work that was done by some of our ancestors. Because right now, I'm saying, Madam Presiding Officer, it does not really exist. We have a lot of hopes. Can we say for sure that we can, we know of a, a lady by the name of Sarah Walters, that's my grandmother, who would have helped people who may have suffered with various ailments. You know, and I can recall a few herbs like um, Wonder of the World and the purpose of it. I can remember things like hog plow bush and the purpose of it. Do we have anywhere in Tobago where that kind of information is stored? Because it is very necessary. In fact, Madam Presiding Officer, I believe that if proper research was done, that such information would have been stored. And by now, we probably may have been commercializing the production of herbal plants. So that building on our heritage would mean that kind of thing. It would mean that we know that there is healing in some plants, because we've proven it over the years. We did not document these things, and the people, the older people would have died, and the information was not transferred. How can we document these bits of information so that our future generation would become aware of it? Again, we can certainly use the information. We can commercialize them. Again, I'm saying that if it is that the proper research was done as far as medicinal crops are concerned, I am certain that we would have had by today a situation where we would have grown commercially, probably tea grass or fever grass, as it is called, and all these sorts of stuff. 
So the, 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 the purpose and the bottom line of the motion, Madam Presiding Officer, is to preserve the work that was done by our ancestors and use this information, use the information for the purpose of advancing our cause and to ensure that as we do so, we store the information and our generation to come and even the students as they come to our universities, they'll be able to do their research properly. You know, I've been, I've heard the minority leader in one place said that when an elderly person dies, uh, a library is burned. It's an African proverb. When an elderly person dies, a uh, library is burned. I heard him say that at BlackRock. And even at the same point, I heard a former MP, Tobago West, supporting that kind of argument. So why are we here today? We are saying to all of us, we should certainly agree that the information that these folks do have, let us research them, let us put them in a, in a manner whereby or future generation can look at them and see where we come from, where we came from, and again, to give us an idea of where we should go. Madam Presiding Officer, so this is a non-contentious motion. I think it's a matter of agreeing that there is a need for village, life, village museums and possibly libraries at the same time each village because as I said before, there are extraordinary, extraordinary things that were done by the little village people that are now not documented and that are extremely important to us all. Madam Presiding Officer, it would certainly please my heart today and the hearts of all Tobigodians to walk into a space, perhaps a part of a community center and to see the names and work done by icons in each village. The names like Desmond Melville, Patrick Arnold, Roll Titus, we have John Arnold. Can you imagine we, 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 we have in a particular village the names of the persons who would have made wise contribution and the names of the people and the work that they would have done I believe, Madam Presiding Officer, that once this motion is agreed and is passed, both sides, that we will have, we will have turned the tide of things, whereby the information that is necessary and the research that is necessary to take us forward would be easily available. And therefore, as I said, the kind of planning the kind of work that we would expect that an assembly should do will be done. In fact, Madam Presiding Officer, in fact, Madam Presiding Officer, I'm saying, in essence, the time has come when something must be done as far as this issue is concerned to ensure that all Tobagonians and those especially on whose backs we climb, on whose shoulders we stand, that we show them, that we care for them, that we love them, that we, by putting the information in a village museum, so that all can see. Secretary of Community Development and Culture, Tracy Davidson Celestine, said that she was not in support of the motion, since they are established institutions in charge of cultural attention for Tobago. I really don't think that you need this house to set a committee to do research within the community because that function is held by most divisions and more so it is held by the Division of Community Development and Culture. And so it is in that vein, Madam Presiding Officer, that I want to respond to the motion at hand here today. The Division of Community Development and Culture has been doing quite a lot of work in terms of collating, I have to make sure I say that right, in terms of collating the information, not coalition the information. 
and in terms of storing the information, Madam Presiding Officer. And we understand that cultural heritage is a very wide subject. And so we understand that because it is very wide, it will take time to research and document all the information. But the point is, we have started. And so that is why I cannot agree with the, with the, the, the motion, the second paragraph, that storage of information has been woefully inadequate. I cannot agree with that. I understand and I support that Tobago is in fact blessed with a lot of community-centered cultural heritage, but the question is, how are we to retrieve and to store some of those information? And notwithstanding, Madam Presiding Officer, I want to categorically state that the systems put in place by the Executive Council, the Tobago House of Assembly, the Division of Community Development and Culture, for research and storage of information has made many strides throughout the years. And so it is exemplified through, we have one, we have established a research unit in the Division of Community Development and Culture, which has a listing of all archae archaeological and historical sites, all monuments and buildings, and the three categories as, out as outlined by UNESCO. And we also have the museum, Madam Presiding Officer, that is under the ambit of the Division of Community Development and Culture. And they, too, have been doing quite a lot of work in terms of archiving and storing and unearthing um, new information as it relates to a culture. As I also want to make the point that cataloging of our cultural heritage literature by the Department of Culture is also available to the public for reference and research purposes. And I looked at a document that I received from the um, research officer two in the division, um, Mrs. Miss Pat Mitchell, and she would have indicated that to date there has been over 500 visitors coming to the department to utilize the information that has been stored. Before I left the office, I would have printed all the information that is stored because I wanted to share it with the member for Canaan Bonacord, but unfortunately, I forgot it at the office and my phone is now dead. And so the objectives of that research unit is to source information on Tobago's heritage culture to source, which means that it's a continuous um, process. To afford the public access to information on Tobago's cultural heritage, to facilitate programs at tertiary level in the area of dance and even drama, to provide an area for tutors to view DVDs as part of the learning process. And so we have reference books, Madam Presiding Officer. We have an open library. We have a study room um, for researchers. And we have a lot of information stored at the Division of Community Development and Culture, more so the Department of Culture. What about the mapping of assets, which is an ongoing process? And so this includes identifying cultural heritage assets at the community level by the Department of Community Development. And this information is now available. We have a database outlining most, if not all, of the community-centered assets. And those persons who are repositories of, of, of information um, Madam Lodge at the Department of Culture. And so while the division is doing all of that, we are also very cognizant of the role IT plays in storing and retrieving information on Tobago's um, cultural heritage. And so that is why we are working endlessly now towards the setting up of a website so that it, is, it can become easier for persons to access these information. I also want to make the point that the Division of Tourism and Transportation, in collaboration with the Tobago Museum, has its own records and data on heritage sites, monuments, and buildings throughout Tobago. In fact, I want to invite the honorable member to peruse the plethora of literature and data which are housed at the Tobago Museum, including, including a book entitled a report on the culture and cultural heritage of Tobago. And so that also has an index to the Tobago archives as documented by the National Archives of Trinidad and Tobago. 
Of course, documentation also exists from pre-Columbian times to the present on cultural heritage. And we cannot, of course, forget the efforts that have been made by the Tobago House of Assembly, the Executive um, Council, to preserve buildings. Look, for instance, at the, ones that, at the one that we are in. Look, for instance, at the contribution that has been made to the different churches, to the different NGOs, to have their buildings looking like, looking um, that traditional, have their buildings with that very traditional um, look, Madam Presiding Officer. And a recently established committee comprising members of the divisions of community development and culture, and also tourism and transportation, are now working to ensure that we establish heritage trails on this island, Madam Presiding Officer. And we know that the heritage trail has as its core objectives, identification of sites, monuments, flora and fauna within those proposed sites, the installation of crea and the creation of interpretive signage in keeping with international best practice, we're conceptualizing and creating heritage trails, utilizing designated cultural heritage areas, identification of areas to pre be preserved with an accompanying management plan, and also the provision of training for tour guides, utilizing designated heritage areas, Madam Presiding Officer. And so we're looking at a number of different areas, the Amerindian Trail, Historic Scarborough, Cocoa Coffee Sugar, Fort Tobago, just to name a few, and of course, Settlement Tobago, to name a few, Madam Presiding Officer. And so, cultural heritage, Madam Presiding Officer, is strongly celebrated on this island, and of course, it is preserved through our heritage festivals. We try to ensure that we preserve it through all the other festivals that we keep from time to time, which, of course, are done by the division of CDC and also the Division of Tourism and Transportation, Madam Presiding Officer. And so I wish to make the point here, Madam Presiding Officer, that in no way can we on this side support the motion as put forward by the, by the member for Cain and Bonacord, because if the member for Cain and Bonacord would have done his research even before the motion was um, submitted, he would have recognized that one, there is collation and storage of information taking place and that it is not woefully inadequate, Madam Presiding Officer. And he would, and so that point makes all the other points irrelevant, Madam Presiding Officer. And as I said again, there is no need for a house to appoint a committee to collect and archive cultural retentions throughout committees of Tobago because this work is being done not only by my division, but also the Division of Tourism and Transportation. And I'm sure other divisions have information um, pertaining, pertaining to them. Assemblyman Steve Jack gave reasons in support of the motion. Tobago has a wealth of Amerindians and other archaeological artifacts, which is not unlike other Caribbean islands. But most of these artifacts are beneath the earth. But, Madam Presiding Officer, we are still fortunate that in a certain way that no intensive or extensive development has destroyed all the sites, all the sites where you find these artifacts. But, Madam Presiding Officer, it might happen sooner or later if these sites are not protected and researched before they are lost beneath concrete, asphalt, and the sea. So the question we are asking here, Madam Presiding Officer, are these systems in place, or are there systems in place by this executive council, right, for research, collation and storage of things like these artifacts that I'm speaking here about, Madam Presiding Officer. These are part of our heritage. In his rebuttal, Chief Secretary over London said that information about Tobago's history and culture is available to the public. Contrary to what is being said, there is comprehensive literature 
There are also uh, comprehensive research done on villages. The, 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 the members spoke about what is going on in, in, in Pembroke. Among the villages where you're getting information is the village of Pembroke, among others, including Argyle, etc., etc. The, the, the members spoke about other aspects like dances and so on. We have research done here on those same dances that you spoke about from Pembo. We have research, they even have research, a uh, member for Canaan Bonacord on medicine, the medicine that you spoke about. There, there, there is actually research done and information available on the various and the various herbs and the various medicines of Tobago. And not only the medicine of Tobago, but medicines coming out of Jamaica and other islands of the Caribbean. This, this document here, uh, in fact, speaks to all the areas. I'm not saying that there are not areas where we can maybe get more information, and that is why they ask people to come in, share their comments, and if you have, uh, if you have additional information, artifacts, etc., to bring it in so that it can become part of this exercise. Assemblyman Kwaku made his final statements in support of the motion. I believe and I hope that members on the other side would agree that there is still the need, there is a need to collect the information from some of these icons. And as I said, some of these persons are ordinary persons, but they will have done extraordinary things within their community. Let us therefore agree this afternoon that there is an absolute need to get this information, allow it, the information to be available, because that is what the motion is, ensure that the, the, the information is available to all stakeholders. All those in favor of this motion say aye. Aye. All those against say nay. Nay. <laughs> The nays have it. The motion is therefore defeated. The Tobago House of Assembly as of Friday, 26 October 2012, has been dissolved. The motion was moved by Chief Secretary Over London. Be resolved that in accordance with Section 22.1 of the Tobago House of Assembly Act, number 40 of 1996, this assembly stands dissolved effect on Friday, October 26, 2012. Madam Presiding Officer, in moving the motion, I might take the opportunity on behalf of the entire House to pay tribute to you for the very firm but sensitive manner in which you have conducted the business of the House during this four years. I also want to give thanks to the assembly staff, all the members for their efficiency and dedication, especially during the longer sitting. And I want to, I want to thank members of the media for the coverage of the proceedings of the House. I wish to advise the House, Madam Presiding Officer, that in accordance with Section 22.2, which states the President, after consultation with the Prime Minister and the Chief Secretary, shall fix the date of a primary election, which date shall not be earlier than the expiration of two months after the dissolution of the assembly, nor later than the expiration of three months after that dissolution, that I intend to advise the president uh, recommending a date for the primary uh, election. And I want to advise Tobago and the country that that date has never been disputed by any prime minister. <laughs> that the president would normally inform or recommend to the prime minister, and every prime minister to date has accepted the recommendation coming from the chief secretary, and I hope that that continues, that that tradition continues. Madam presiding officer, I am aware that many of the members will not be returning to the house. Some, some by their own choice and others by the choice of the electorate. But I want to wish, I want to wish, I want to wish all members well. All those in favor with the motion say aye. aye. 
All those against say nay. The eyes have it. This soul, this house, therefore, now stands dissolved. With that said, Madam Presiding Officer, I now beg to move that this house now stand adjourned to a date to be fixed. <laughs> Members, the question is that this house now stands adjourned to a date to be fixed because we are not closing down the Tobago House of Assembly. We are merely dissolving to move on. Members, now I've lost, I've lost track of where will be the adjournment or whatever. All right. Well, at this stage, before I adjourn for the final time in this session, I just want to thank you all for all that went together to make this session the challenging experience that it has been. We have generally survived, for which we must be extremely grateful. And I cannot but endorse the pleadings on either side that as a Tobigonian, at the end of all that is about to happen, we would be able to hold our heads high and we would not do anything during the impending campaign for which we would feel ashamed. Let us go forward and let us hope that we would have healthy debates and at the end of it, may we end with the best team since what we really want is the best that we can get for the promotion of the welfare and development of Tobago. Thanks again, and we look forward to, as I say, the weeks ahead, very productive. And again, may the best team be, find itself back when we adjourn in the new session. Thank you very much. This house now stands adjourned until a new date is fixed for the new session. Thank you for tuning in to the 51st and final sitting of the Tobago House of Assembly 2009 to 2013 session. I am Umadara Mills for the Department of Information.